Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. Here we have the Royal Alloy 150cc scooter. First of all, it's a replica of a classic Italian icon called the Lambretta. From here on, I'm going to refer to this as the L branded scooter, the Royal Alloy L. But that's not really what it's called, it's just the Royal Alloy uh, I think GT150, but I don't need to say Lambretta like 20,000 times throughout this video. I'm going to do a quick review, pretty much cover my thoughts on the scooter and start from the front and move towards the back and talk about all the features and all the great stuff this scooter's got to offer. So the number one thing this scooter's got going for it is the classic looks that are reminiscent of that L branded scooter. You got the Grand Tour 150, powered by an automatic transmission 150cc four-stroke engine from the Taiwanese scooter company Sim. Performance-wise, is kind of average for a 150. It's not quick like a Sprint. It's not as fast as like a Honda PCX, but definitely faster than like something like a Vino 125. Um, just a heavier scooter being an all steel chassis. This is all steel, just like the real McCoy. You got a horn cover that's kind of reminiscent of a Series 3 L branded scooter. You got the fixed in place fender, although in plastic for your purist, you may not like that, but it still has a classic looks. Moving on to the front end of the scooter. It's got the trailing link suspension that's very close to reminiscent of the original L branded scooter. Uh, what is different though is you're rocking 12 inch tires. 12 inch tires are kind of the norm for the average scooter nowadays. Um, gives you extra stability over those classic 10 inch tires. It's got dual shock absorbers that have fully adjustable preload on them. They work rather well. It's got a three piston linked disc brake caliper along with a rather large wave rotor. Braking's more than adequate on the scooter, nice braided brake lines. Pretty happy with the front end. One thing about this scooter, this is the second generation of the front end. The first batch of these scooters had like a slightly different front end. Moving on to the lighting and the handlebar headset, of course, very reminiscent of the classic L branded scooter. It's got an LED headlight that functions rather well, along with a cool looking running light. This is Royal Alloy in there. I thought that was a very nice touch. Kind of illuminates when you power up the scooter. Uh, it's got these cool looking Lake Shield turn signals. Unfortunately for the US market, they're just dummy lights and don't do anything. You got these little pod turn signals. It may be possible to swap these over. I haven't looked into it. Pretty new scooter, we haven't sold that many of them, maybe a handful of them, I think eight or seven, ever since these have been introduced. Um, there's been a ton of interest in this scooter. I'm pretty excited about it. I really love the price of the point of this scooter. I think it's about $2,000 less than a comparable Vespa 150, but you're getting the classic looks. It's not quite as fast as a Primavera or a Sprint 150, but you're getting a classic style scooter that has a fairly solid construction for a price point that's just above the Buddy 125 from Genuine. Forgot to mention, this is imported in the United States by Genuine Scooter Company. Um, they import all sorts of really cool stuff, starting back in the day with the Stella, which is pretty much exact clone of the PX150 Vespa. Uh, those are long gone, and this is one of their latest uh, products that they import, along with some other really cool electric scooters, a motorcycle that I've done a review on. On the handlebars, you got double disc brakes, front and rear. Something that most 150 class scooters, they don't have disc brake on the rear. It's kind of just a nice touch, not really needed. It's got a pretty cool instrumentation. It's kind of got the classic shape, but obviously the modern LCD digital indi indicators here. Miles per hour, you got RPMs that show your engine speed. 
And you can see. Um, over here is a fuel gauge. The oddball one is the voltage meter. And it does whatever. If your charging system goes out, I guess it's going to tell you something. It does have a trip odometer, and you can set the kilometers. And I'll show you where the secret button is. That's the, the secret feature of this scooter. Uh, standard handlebar controls, very much like a motorcycle. Horns kind of in a peculiar spot where it's above the turn signal switch. I'm used to standard motorcycle controls where you got the headlight switch, turn signal switch right here, and the horn down here, but for some reason they have them swapped. Obviously, if you own a scooter like this, you would um, completely get used to that. You got the kill switch, start switch, you pull a brake, start it. Moving further down, you got the standard key. It's got a very nice looking key. I like that key. RA with the like little British uh, emblem on there. Sorry, I don't know what it's really called, but and with the chrome trim, nice key. Obviously you can lock the steering like most modern scooters. Unlock it, it's got a bag hook, which can come in handy if you're gonna go shopping or going on a tour across the country. You hang your uh, rucksack right here in the middle. Open up the glove box with the key. If you buy it from a quality dealership such as Vespa Motorsport, you're gonna get a nice document folder with the owner's manual. But moving on to the more important items, you got a tool kit in here, enough to change the battery or take the rear cowls off. You got a, a USB charging jack for your mobile phone, your cellular or whatever you wanna do, your PDA if you're really going old school. You got a little pocket for your change when you go through that toll booth. And let me show you the secret button. So way up in here, that's the reset your trip odometer and you can set the odometer and speedometer from uh, miles to clicks, the kilometers there. So. so moving on to the floorboard, you got the classic looking rubber strips, floorboard strips, you got the steel, very nice. You got a rubber uh, leg shield edge trim on there, reminiscent of a classic scooter. You got an access hatch right here that unbolts. It doesn't actually open like the real L-branded scooter from back in the day. The cowls are removable. You do need to unbolt them. Not much need to really get in there with a modern automatic scooter. No spark plugs to change because you fouled it out. Pretty much just need to open it when you're going to service the scooter, such as doing a valve adjustment uh, and so forth. Uh, the seat arrangement on this, there's an optional bench seat that I've found is much more comfortable than this split seat arrangement that comes stock on all these Royal Alloys. It's got a kind of a precure uh, attachment for the um, seat. A bunch of suction pups, except fun octopus suction cup kind of noise there. And I'm mistaken, I did say this was a Genuine Scooters. It's actually the Chicago Scooter Company, which is under the wings of the Genuine Scooter Company. Um, Chicago, they have some other Chinese branded scooters that they import. Typically all the Chicago Scooter Company scooters, mostly they're sold through Genuine dealers. Um, they typically come with a one year warranty. So you got the fuel cap, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the fuel uh, tank size, but it's probably more than adequate for being in town. It's completely locks if that's something that's important to you. Got the passenger seat. Uh, the seats are color keyed to the, the body. Um, you go for the, the cool looking ivory and burgundy scooters, got a different color arrangement for the seat. Got the, the little rack right here. There's also an optional rack with a, a backrest, if I recall. It's built very nice. This is actually the bracketry is kind of copied from the Vespa 946, where they had aluminum brackets, and they have a really nice polished stainless steel rack. 
One thing I like about the scooter, all the lighting is LED all the way around. So the tail light looks super cool as well. No bulbs ever change and it just looks techy and cool. Kind of neo-modern, but classic, but cool, but modern, whatever, however you want to say it. Um, LEDs are kind of the way it is with everything nowadays and you got the turn signals. They're very, very bright built into the, the leg shields. At least they didn't have to use pods for the rear. Moving on to the rear tire, a 130, 70, 12. So it's got that large 12 inch tire. The wheelbase on the scooter is rather large. If you park this neat thing right next to a Vespa GTS 300, um, very similar in size, despite being a 150 cc scooter. And that has a, is it advantages as being a more stable scooter, but also it's the disadvantages. Uh, it's a heavier scooter. It's definitely taller on the seat height. I'm like a five, seven, five, eight. And if it's on the stand, I'm kind of like almost on my toes, but even sitting on it, I'm barely flat foot in the scooter. So if you're shorter than five, seven, I don't know what the equivalent inseam is for a typical, um, 50th percentile uh, male with a 5'7 um, height, but you can see I'm flat foot. If this thing was an inch taller, I'd be kind of tippet toeing on it. Um, it. Does have some pretty cool looking passenger pegs. They're all made out of die cast aluminum. Fold out. Uh, uh, haven't taken any passengers on the scooter, but I, I suspect it's rather com comfortable being a lengthy, long, scooter and one thing to keep in mind about the scooter is carbureted we're in the year 2020 nearly everything on our showroom is all fuel injected um, it's kind of what I expect for a newer scooter to be a fuel injected engine obviously putting a carburetor on this if they can pass emissions it does keep the price point lower because a carburetor is simpler, does have that advantage that uh, as a do-it-yourselfer, it's much easier to tinker with or clean when it needs to be clean. But fuel injection, on the other hand, is much more reliable, less likely to stall out or just have problems in general. They're so reliable nowadays. Um, but if there is a problem with the fuel injection system, typically that's a dealer-only kind of maintenance that you would need, um, but pretty rare. But this scooter has a carburetor, so sometimes they're a little stubborn when they're cold, you cold start them. They may stall out a couple times. But I've started this earlier today, so of course it comes back, comes right alive. Um, as for performance, I've taken one of these on a pretty good test ride. It handles very much like a Cadillac, being that nice long wheelbase. In the sharp turns, you can definitely feel the weight. And also I'm not too much of a fan of the slightly cramped uh, floorboard position. Kind of put, puts my knees almost up into the, um, the handlebars. If you're quite a tall person, like 6'2", you may find this scooter to be a little cramped in that, that regard. So it's just got a higher floorboard height compared to many other scooters. Obviously it gives you good lean angles, but um, cramps you up a little bit. Top speed is just shy of 60 miles an hour, about five, six miles an hour slower than a Vespa Primavera Sprint. Um, same with like a Honda PCX or S-Max, five, six miles an hour slower. That's mainly due to the weight and a slightly lower tech, simpler motor design that probably doesn't quite have the, the output, power output as some of its modern counterparts. Uh, the top three dislikes. Um, I would say the ergonomics just aren't quite there. They're not quite to the level of when I ride a Sprint or Primavera or even a vintage Vespa. To me, those scooters are so comfortable. I can ride one all day. I'd be afraid to ride this all day. I understand most people buying a scooter like this aren't gonna ride it for eight hours. You know, they're gonna ride it on a 15 minute commute. So that may not be an issue. 
Uh, number two for dislikes, uh, the performance could be a bit better. And number three, it's still got a carburetor in it. Come on, it's 2020. Uh, the future's moving on to electric vehicles and we got a gas motor with a carburetor. Uh, I thought those were left for the lawn mowers, but again, that could have its plus sides. You know, if you do wanna uh, keep up and maintain the scooter for yourself, much simpler design. For the three pluses, obviously the looks. It may be kind of physically a little larger than the original L-branded scooter, but everybody asks what it is. Everybody's interested in it. It's just a cool looking scooter. Doesn't just look like, just like a st standard generic scooter. Doesn't look like a timeless Vespa, modern Vespa, whatever. Uh, it's definitely something that turns heads. So if that's what you're looking for, this scooter's gonna do it for you. Uh, number two on the pluses is that price point. Uh, got the price up on the screen. I don't remember off the top of my head when I'm doing this video, but it is so much cheaper than its counterparts in this class of scooter. Uh, number three for the pluses is you got the quality of a reputable importer, you know, Chicago Scooter Company, Genuine Scooters. Uh, they're a great company. We've been working with them for years. I love everybody that works there. Um, they're not just a fly-by-night company. As with many low price point scooters where who knows if you have anybody that's gonna support you. Uh, this scooter, you know your dealer network's gonna take care of you. I think that's a very important thing that a lot of people overlook when they're buying a lower price point scooter. Doesn't matter if you're buying something like this or anything else. You see that no brain, no name scooter that somebody's selling online or on Craigslist? Who's gonna help you out when it breaks? You think parts are so easy to find for a GY6 scooter? What's GY6 mean? GY6 means an architecture from some Honda motor from the 80s. Um, there's so many variations of that motor. Have fun finding parts for that scooter. So there's my top three and bottom three for what I think about this scooter. I hope that kind of gives you some thought whether you're thinking of a scooter like this or something else. So this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com for all things Vespa and many other scooters. Check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. We have everything in stock and help you out. If you're in Southern California, check out our dealership, Vespa Motorsport. Uh, come by our dealership in San Diego. We got a huge showroom. We only stick to scooters. We don't just push the scooters to the side. I may love motorcycles, I can care less, I like scooters more. And they are much more practical and they are the better weapon for uh, general commuting, just cruising around town. Motorcycles great for cross country or off-roading, but scooters are where it's at. Until next time, it's Robot here. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram or Facebook, Vespa Motorsport. Um, hit if you like this video, hit the uh, thumbs up and like it. Helps uh, keep our channel rolling. I have well over 500 videos. See ya. Safe scooting.